So today is going to be very different. Um, so we're in the face of Hurricane Dorian and what has happened in the Bahamas. And coping with that crisis could be overwhelming even for those who are observing from a distance. I have two friends, two people I know, who are in the Bahamas right now. One of which I've heard from recently, and as of right now, he's safe. He's in shock and he's worried and he's trying to help other people, but he's safe. The other one, haven't heard from him. And so that's so upsetting. I mean, really upsetting. I didn't want to cry on here. I know that it can be really hard. And having the training and having the know-how and having all the right books and everything else doesn't make it better. So in reality, I'm feeling it just like anyone else's. However, I do know that a way to help ourselves is to be more empowered. I want to discuss something about a speaker that I once heard. So backtracking a little bit. Her name was Nina Koleski. I want to say Koleski. I forget the last name specifically. She was a Holocaust survivor. And one of her jobs in the Holocaust, this is after her mother and father were taken away, after her, she saw her sister die, after all of this trauma. And she's young at this point. She's a teenager. One of her jobs was to carry the dead bodies over to an area to be burned. So when I heard this woman speaking in Philadelphia, I was overwhelmed with how this woman could go through so much and she could still find positive because she was the most positive person I've ever met in my life. And that far surpasses, and sorry, Tony Robbins, but far surpasses Tony Robbins or any motivational speaker I've ever heard, any TED Talk I've ever heard, Nina her positivity and her lessons just blew everyone away. So this is what I learned from Nina that day. She decided that even though she only had a little bit of milk or a little bit of water and one piece of bread for the entire day, she would have part of that bread or one piece of bread and drink her milk and, and have enough energy that if somebody died and she had to pick them up, that instead of being angry at the Nazis or angry at God or angry at the world, that she would, as she was walking them to their final resting place, to be burned horrifically, holding those skinny little bodies with, and these are all children, understand, children and teens, holding their little bodies. And as she was walking with her own malnutritioned body, that she was going to say a prayer for them and that walk would be nothing but dignity. She was able to, in that moment of something so horrific, turn it around into something so beautiful. If we look back and we look at what's happening now in the Bahamas and we feel helpless, you don't have to feel helpless. You can do something. If each and every person just sends one pack of diapers or one outfit from a baby, everybody, almost everybody can donate a little bit. So when you're feeling disempowered and looking at all of this heartbreak and loss, we can still do something. And my belief is that even when people are in conflict, even when there's crisis, even when there's something like this happening, we all have this unity. We are all bound together, hopefully, by this humanity, this solidarity, this energetic connection, this connectedness. And if we all do one mitzvah today, if we all do that one good deed and help someone who has nothing, and we don't have to brag about it, we don't have to post on Facebook that we did this good deed. If you want to do that to encourage other people, definitely do it. But you can just do it quietly and just know that you've made a difference. And if we can help people who have lost everything, to have a little bit of hope in humanity, in God. Because right now, there's a lot of people right now in the Bahamas, those that have survived, who right now have lost everything, their family photos, who have lost individuals and things and, and hope. If we can help them raise their dopamine levels, and this is why this is therapeutic, and this is why I'm putting this on my channel, number one, just to get it out there. But number two, 
to also just encourage you to understand that this is your gesture, no matter how small that you think it might be, is going to have a huge impact on not one but many people. Because when we have no hope, our dopamine levels are lower and our resilience is lower and our health can become impacted. So much can happen when our dopamine is too low. And, and other hormones as well. But if you can give someone hope, just imagine them opening up a bar of soap or having a toothbrush or being able to feed their child. I'm not saying don't help one of your own. I'm not saying don't help the people in your own backyard, in your own communities, or your pet project or your pet item that you are focused on. Like I love focusing on feeding hungry children and planting trees. Two big things for me right now, hopefully for you too, but I know everyone has their own thing. But if you can just understand that we have, if you have more to give, then give. I mean, if you have a roof over your head, if you have food in your refrigerator, if you have access to food, if you have access to other people and support systems, then you are blessed. We've all had setbacks. We've all had obstacles. Some of us are going through obstacles right now, and that's okay. In this, if you have anything in you right now that you could, even in your home, without even going shopping, if there's something that you can gather up and send down to Miami for the people in the Bahamas or anything at all, um, because it just it's heartbreaking to hear a video of a woman saying, please pray for us, please pray for my four-month-old child. They still have to rebuild their homes. They still have to rebuild their lives. And I feel like spiritually, we think of building a life as a man and a woman having a baby or someone adopting a baby, a couple adopting a baby as bringing life into the world and bringing life where there was not life before. And so I would like to hope that this rebuilding of the Bahamas and the rebuilding of lives is going to be just like that, that light of life that is very much needed. So that's all I have right now.